If you're preparing for technical interviews or just looking to enhance your problem solving skills, this video is for you. Hi everyone, welcome back to Lead Journey. Today I want to walk you through the most asked coding patterns on Lead Code. Before we dive in, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and press the bell icon to stay updated on all new videos. Now let's get started. Let's first understand why coding patterns are so crucial on lead code. Coding patterns provide a structured approach to problem solving. Recognizing these patterns can significantly boost your efficiency and confidence during coding interviews. We are going to explore five of the most asked coding patterns today, so stay tuned until the end. The first pattern on our list is the sliding window one. The sliding window pattern is a technique used in programming and competitive coding, particularly in solving problems related to arrays and strings. It involves maintaining a set of elements within a window that can slide through the array or string. The window's size can vary and it's often used to efficiently perform operations like finding subarrays, sublists or substrings that can satisfy certain conditions. The sliding window pattern typically consists of two pointers, a left pointer and a right pointer. These pointers define the current window, and as the window slides through the array or string, the pointers are adjusted accordingly. This pattern is particularly useful when dealing with problems that require you to find subarray, sublist, or substring that satisfies a specific condition like the maximum sum of a subarray, the longest substring without repeating characters, or the minimum size subarray with a given sum. Here's a general outline of how the sliding window pattern works. First, we have initialization. Set up two pointers, usually at the beginning of the array or string. Then expand the window. Move the right pointer to expand the window, adding elements to the current window. Then contract the window. If the current window satisfies the given condition, try to minimize or maximize it by moving the left pointer and then repeat. Continue with steps 2 and 3 until you've processed the entire string or array. The sliding window pattern can help optimize the time complexity of certain algorithms by avoiding redundant computations. Let's take a look at some lead code questions which require you to use the sliding window pattern, longest substring without repeating characters, longest repeating character replacement. The second pattern on our list is two pointers. The two pointers pattern is another technique frequently used in programming and competitive coding, especially for solving problems related to arrays or linked lists. This pattern involves using two pointers that traverse the array or linked list in some manner to solve the problem efficiently. Here are some common scenarios where the two pointers pattern is applicable. We can have two pointers moving towards each other, in this case, we need to initialize the two pointers at the beginning and end of the array and then move the pointers towards each other until they meet or cross paths. This approach is often useful when dealing with sorted arrays or finding a pair of elements with a specific sum. The second scenario we can have is two pointers moving in the same direction. We need to initialize two pointers at the beginning of the array and then we need to move both pointers in the same direction, maintaining a certain condition. This approach is useful when you need to track a range or window in the array that satisfies a particular condition. And the last scenario is fast and slow pointers. In this case, we use two pointers, one moving faster than the other. This is commonly used for tasks like detecting cycles in linked lists or finding the middle of a linked list. The two pointers pattern is especially effective in situations where brute force solutions would be too slow and involve redundant calculations. By using two pointers strategically, you can often achieve a more optimal solution. Lead code problems that involve searching for a pair, subarray, or sequence often lend themselves well to the two pointers pattern. It's essential to analyze the problem's requirements and constraints to determine if this pattern is suitable for a given scenario. Some lead code questions that require this coding pattern and which I suggest you look at are best time to buy and sell stock, valid palindrome, 2sum2 input array sorted, and 3sum. 
By the way, you can find links to these problems in the description box below. The next pattern on our list is binary search. The binary search pattern is a technique commonly used to efficiently search for a specific value in a sorted array or perform similar tasks in ordered data structures. Binary search operates by repeatedly dividing the search space in half, discarding the half that is known not to contain the target value, until the target is found or the search space is empty. Here is a general outline of the binary search pattern. The first step is initialization. Set the initial search space. In the case of an array, this would typically be the entire array. Next, define pointers. Maintain two pointers, usually denoted as left and right pointer, to represent the current search space. Next step, search or update. If the target is in the middle, you found the answer. If the target is less than the middle element, discard the right half of the search space. Instead, if the target is greater than the middle element, discard the left half of the search space. Repeat these steps until the target is found or the search space is empty. And then we have termination. The algorithm terminates when the search space is empty, indicating that the target is not in the array or when the target is found. Binary search is particularly efficient for searching in sorted data structures because it eliminates half of the remaining elements at each step, leading to a time complexity of big O of log n, where n is the size of the array. Lead code problems that involve searching, finding a specific specific element or making decisions based on a sorted array often benefit from the binary search pattern. It's essential to understand that the array or data structure must be sorted for binary search to be applicable. Here are some problems that scream for a binary search solution. You'll love the elegance and efficiency it brings to the table. Check out the binary search problem. Find minimum in rotated sorted array and search in rotated sorted array. Depth first search or DFS is our next lead code pattern. DFS is a technique for traversing or searching through tree or graph structures by exploring as far as possible along each branch before backtracking. It often involves recursion or using an explicit stack to keep track of the nodes to be visited. Here is a general outline of how DFS works. First, visit a node. Start at a given node and mark it as visited. Then explore the neighbors. Explore each neighbor of the current node and then recursion or stack. For each unvisited neighbor, apply DFS recursively or use an explicit stack to visit it. And in the end, backtrack. If you reach a node where no unvisited neighbors are left, backtrack to the previous node. DFS can be applied to both trees and graphs, and depending on the specific problem, variations of DFS may be used, such as pre-order DFS, visit the current node before its children, in-order DFS, visit the left child, then the current node, and finally the right child, post-order DFS, visit the children before the current node, Common scenarios where DFS is applicable on lead code include problems involving graph traversal, finding connected components, depth related properties, and many more. When using DFS, it's crucial to handle visited nodes properly to avoid infinite loops in cyclic graphs or trees. Additionally, understanding the problem requirements and adapting the DFS approach accordingly is essential for crafting an effective solution. Some lead code questions which you can try to solve that involve DFS are number of islands, clone graph, and max area of island. Last but not least, on our list we have dynamic programming. Dynamic programming is a powerful algorithmic technique used to solve problems by breaking them down into smaller overlapping subproblems and solving each subproblem only once, storing the solutions to subproblems in a table, usually an array, to avoid redundant computations. Dynamic programming is often applied to optimization problems where the goal is to find the best solution among a set of feasible solutions. Here are some key concepts and characteristics of the dynamic programming pattern. 
overlapping subproblems. The problem can be broken down into smaller overlapping subproblems and solving each subproblem provides a building block for solving the original problem. Optimal substructure. The optimal solution to the original problem can be constructed from the optimal solutions of its overlapping subproblems. Memoization or tabulation. DP solutions can be implemented using either memoization top-down or tabulation, bottom-up. Memoization involves storing the results of expensive function calls and returning the cache result when the same inputs occur again. Tabulation involves solving the problem by iteratively filling a table, typically in a bottom-up fashion. And lastly, we have state transition. Identify the recurrence relation or formula that expresses the solution to a subproblem in terms of solutions to smaller subproblems. Dynamic programming is widely used in solving optimization problems, such as finding the longest common subsequence, the shortest path, or maximizing or minimizing some value subject to certain constraints. On lead code, problems categorized under dynamic programming often involve optimizing a solution based on a specific criterion. When approaching a DP problem, it's essential to understand the optimal substructure and overlapping subproblems and carefully design the state transition and data structures to efficiently solve the problem. Dynamic programming might be a bit overwhelming at the beginning but practice is gonna make it easier. So here are some lead code questions that cover dynamic programming, which you can try to solve. Climbing stairs, house rubber, and coin change. And there you have it, the most asked coding patterns on lead code. Remember, practice makes perfect. So keep solving problems using these patterns to solidify your understanding. I have also made a video on the most asked data structures on lead code. I highly suggest you also check out that video as you might find it useful. If you found this video useful, please like and subscribe. Also check out my YouTube channel, you're gonna find many more lead code questions and other videos that I hope you're gonna find useful to prepare for your technical interviews. Thank you.